living our lives. We just living our lives. Yeah. Walking flies, living our lives. We just living our lives. You're listening to the Living That Life Digital Nomad Podcast. Hit the subscribe button on iTunes if you're a boss. And check out the YouTube channel for dope travel videos. Let's get it. We're going to get into it. Let's just jump right into it. I'm recording the one and only, my main man, King Ma, (laughs) OG, six years ago at the same conference, the young Buddha, the young Padawan, Evan T, copywriter extraordinaire. Now he is in Georgia, and he's going to show his view in a second. But if you don't know, emotiveemotion.com, he is now a high conversion sales copywriter, and he's got clients, and he's been crushing it through 2020 so i wanted to hop on this catch-up call for all the og fans and just for me like i'm curious how much your business has grown it's been a while since we've caught up what you learned during 2020 your takeaways uh because uh yeah man a lot has uh, has happened since we since we last caught up there was a huge global pandemic and you've been in uh in georgia this whole time and uh yeah man i want to catch up i want to uh, want to know how your business is going and how your copywriting thing is going so yeah if you guys want to learn copywriting uh, or if you're a business owner and uh, you want to hire like the top 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 level copywriter that's evan teague right there that's my guy motiveemotion.com uh check him out anyway evan what's good show everyone your uh hey. view right now what's good bro that was a hell of an intro so thanks for that yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna flip it yeah, yeah, sideways yeah. but yeah right up here this is right out of the uh cabin i'm in basically just staying in like a cabin hotel for the for the uh week and just getting a retreat where i'm not really working hard i'm just kind of chilling so puts me up yep. in Colorado, basically. It's, I'm in Georgia in the mountains, but yeah, it basically puts me right back into Colorado, which is where I'm from. So it's quite nice to just relax. And um, yeah, man, thanks for the intro. I appreciate that. But um, yeah. yeah, basically this year has been crazy and you know, you know what it is, but pandemic, crazy vibes. All the entrepreneur friends that I know have done quite well this year. A lot of people who weren't um, planning ahead for this or maybe who weren't very positioned to capitalize on, you know, all the crazy stuff going down or insulate themselves um unfortunately fared quite quite uh bad you know a lot of unemployment a lot of crazy numbers uh, a lot of people really struggling out here and so yeah i definitely feel um thankful for the position that i'm in and i also feel yeah. my heart goes out to the people who have really struggled through last year because it was really something unprecedented yeah. and uh yeah but like i said it's been you know it's been crazy just yeah i don't know like just in general starting out um in a new country and then just kind of starting over getting my routine down and uh yeah coming up on almost a year in georgia which is you know eastern europe for those yeah. who don't know obviously you've so- probably heard something about georgia this tiny little country yeah. but yeah. north of turkey south of russia and yeah basically yeah. it's just it's a cool spot been here since march and i can't um express the amount of value and routine and consistency that being in one place for one year and not traveling at all not going anywhere except inside the country you know different cities and to the mountains to the ocean whatever uh and to the wine, wine regions, of course, in the Eastern regions, but um, yeah, just coming around the country, but staying in one place has been so valuable for me actually getting up a, a level up and legging a leg up, if you will, for investing, saving, you know, budgeting, and yeah. then obviously the work and routine. So yeah, I really, really have had a good year and I've been working quite like quite smart and leveraged rather than, you know, hard or whatever. So um, yeah. getting a good leverage amount of, of or leverage for the amount of time that I'm putting in for each client project. And, um, yeah, yeah like this year, uh, obviously you can feel free to ask me whatever, but this year I made a couple of good yeah, plateaus well, where I've really blast mm-hmm. past like the, the mm-hmm. hourly rate that I'm usually, I'm not charging hourly, but just for, for a kind of a glimpse, I'm yeah, usually getting yeah. around three to $600 per hour when I'm working. So I will wow, usually nice. take on fixed projects and my average is like at least 300 and usually a, a little under 600, somewhere in that range. Um, so I've been able to work quite, you know, quite a low level, low, low amount of numbers per week, maybe, you know, 20 hours or 25, 30. And uh, yeah, I've been able to really be focused and driven and have the routine, the gym, you know, the restaurants, the nice food, the delivery, the work and the friendships and all that stuff has been very, very dialed. And it's, it's, you know, shown the effect on my business and my lifestyle and everything. So very happy to be where I'm at and thankful things are going well, man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. We, yeah. We'll get into uh, uh, the details in a second, but yeah, that's, that's crazy that, right. I remember that uh, we went to see uh, that movie in Chiang Mai last January. Mm. 
So that was Gentlemen. about a, about a year ago, about twelve yeah. uh, years ago, twelve months ago. Twelve years, and then right, <laughs> twelve years ago, and then before I we knew each other, Bangkok. we watched the movie. Yeah, <laughs> twelve years. Ago. <laughs> and then I bounced to Bangkok, and you uh, you bounced to Georgia, so you're about a year there, and then yep. uh, and then boom, Corona hit. Um, but uh, of course, like even, even, you know, even last year, your, your copyright copywriting business was, uh, was, uh, um, flourishing and you're doing well, like how much, um, how much has, uh, how much did you grow in terms of a client base in terms of like revenue, uh, in, in 2020? And like, do you think Corona was, a uh, uh, did it like, was that a, a factor in speeding up? like the incoming traffic because more businesses need more online marketing now or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think honestly, like uh, the biggest, biggest shift that I've noticed has been just the quality of people that I'm accepting. And then the hard line of like a boundary that I'm declining, you know, like clients that want to come to me for projects that are maybe like, you know, 500, 750, a thousand. I'm not really even interested in that anymore just yeah. because it doesn't really add to my like, bottom line that much like bigger numbers yeah. stack up faster obviously right so yeah. if you're going to be spending time and if you're going to be you know powerhousing through this person's business and their strategy and the consulting and the writing copy um really i've noticed that if i'm you know kind of closing the door to more clients and opening it only to a select few uh yeah. of higher value people i get about four or five clients a month and that really makes up for mm -hmm. my like revenue goals and whatever and uh that has been one big thing that's boosted revenue. It's also boosted my focus and honestly like decreased the amount of work and, and like kind of like tying things together that I need to do in other people's business. Because I've noticed that not only the you know, better paying clients like show up more, they're more reliable, more responsive, but they actually have the budget to put your work in, uh, into detail and actually into motion. And they have to um, you know, collect a lot of data that they're already gonna likely have in their business because they have momentum and actual you know, proof of concept. And so <laughs> that's been a huge part of uh, growing my business because I recognize that I'm, sh I'm eye to eye with the people that I'm showing up for. And sometimes in the past, I've been up here where a client's been up here and I'm not talking about like, you know, morally or whatever, but like their, their level of preparedness and like sales and revenue and consistency and all that stuff is like here where I'm exposed and used to, you know, running up here. And what I mean by that, at least throwing some rough numbers around it, like I'm used to taking in clients who are at least doing like 100 to 250 K at least per year on revenue. Uh, and so like, if I'm doing less than that, then I've noticed that a little bit of lag in my business and my kind of catch up because I got to provide more, show up more, add more support where it doesn't, it, it sounds like kind of weird or selfish or whatever, but it, it kind of chips away at my hourly rate and return on value for the four or five years that I've invested and been copywriter for this whole time and bought books and courses and hired mentors and like take people out to dinner that I wanted to learn from and like calling people and reading, you know, like all that stuff. So, and obviously serving dozens and dozens of clients and hundreds of products and niches and industries and whatever. So if I'm showing up here, I need clients to show up here. So me just having that as a boundary has been like really, really impactful for both myself and for them. And, you know, right before we started recording, it, it leads to another thing is one of my recent clients um, who I'm going to keep his details private and whatnot, but he made well over 200K in revenue from my copy. And, you know, his perfect example, he had a list, he had the audience, he had the authority, he had the marketing sense and knowledge, hired me, I did the work, he got like 100X on investment for what he invested in me. Mm, and it was just yeah. really, really good for both people. And then he kept back coming back and then giving me more clients to work with and whatever. So it's just an example of where when my copy reached the right person with the right, um, you know, preparedness, it can just explode. And it makes me very happy because it's my results or my client's results as a direct response copywriter is the only reason you're writing is to make more sales and help them sell their product and service. So as a DR copywriter, um, so their results are my results. So yeah, it makes me feel happy. Yeah. It also gives me more new clients, um, but it really up levels my experience. So it's kind of been, yeah, it's kind of been the wrap up, right? Dope, dope, dope. So, um, so you also have like an ebook or a book on like helping copywriters. So like someone, like I've talked about copywriting is one of the best ways you can make money remotely. I've talked about that many times. Mm -hmm. Like what's the business model for a budding copywriter or for someone who is like, you know, obviously is pretty good at writing, you know, Western person. What's the business model? Like, how should they turn that into a business? Or like, do you start start off freelancing on Upwork? Do you like what's the what's the breakdown of someone that would want to get started like doing what you do? 
Yeah. So I always talk about like really two or three main things. Um, you just mentioned one of them is starting on like Upwork, Freelancer, Fiverr, whatever. I would, uh, I would definitely advise doing that because you get your chops um, very quickly and you get to actually get exposed to real projects and you don't, know, you don't have to know how to like go out and get clients from the market, which can be tough at first. Uh, you just sign up in profile and start applying to some jobs and get your first job for low ticket offer and then just kind of, you know, go from there. That's definitely one viable solution that I would suggest. Um, another one is like just going out into the market and prospecting, you know, just bringing people value um, up front and not really charging for it. Um, and then just a side note before I go to the third one as well, this page you're looking on here, this is, um, a free ebook that you can download. And it's basically six secrets about like, you know, where you're caught, where you're starting uh, out at square one and how to, how to, uh, begin your career. So you can go download that for free and then get a bunch of value as well from the emails that I'll send you afterwards on an automatic, like autoresponder or whatever. It's a lot of the work that I'm doing for clients as well. Um, I have another, another book that also is like six secrets to boosting your conversions. That's more for if you've already got a business and you're interested in how to um, boost your conversions and, and whatnot. So um, those are the two offers that are just free. You can go grab those right now if you're interested in, and depending on you know, who you are, where you're at, all that stuff. So yeah, so that's the second way. Third, third way, what I, I would say is like really just reaching out to people in general, like emailing, cold email. Cold email is a super, super fast way to get started. It's free. All it takes is your time. Um, you just maybe put a list together of a hundred people you might want to work for and email them all. And again, like follow can spam acts. Don't break the law, you know, show them where you're coming from, show them that you're legit, all that good stuff. But other than that, if you're in the U S you're allowed to cold email people and pitch them certain services, as long as you're saying certain things, like this is an advertisement, you're not using misleading headlines. You're putting your address in the bottom of the, of the, uh, email stuff like that. You're, you just really want to follow those can spam laws. But if you do, there's seven of them. If you do, you be straight within the rules and you can in the U S at least, and you can go out and say, Hey, look, my name is John, Jamie, Jack, whatever, Trevor. <laughs> and I'm a new copywriter. I, you don't want to say, I don't know anything about anything. You want to just say, I'm a copywriter. I'm learning to build my first initial experiences and I'd like to work for you for free. And if you would like to get some results from my copy, if it works, fantastic. I'm not going to charge you anything. All I would ask is that you say a couple of good words about my work um, when we're done. And most people would be like, yeah, of course, if they have time, I wouldn't go out pitching Fortune 500 companies if you're brand new, but a couple of yeah. startups, maybe partnerships, you know, small businesses, you go out to them, go to a hundred of those people. If you hit all of them up, over like a week, maybe four or five emails per company, you're going to get one or two people who would take your call at least. And then, because that's the call to action is like, Hey, I am a brand new copywriter. Um, I'm learning and whatnot, but I don't, I'm not going to charge for this first thing. I just want a, a good, you know, review or testimonial. And then, um, yeah, you do that for enough people. You get on the phone, the call to action is to get on the phone, have a chat, it's free, all that. And, um, then start to demonstrate a little bit of your experience, even though you're new, that's a great way to get started. And I've gotten uh, dozens of calls just that way by hitting out fun, uh, sorry, hundreds and even thousands of emails for certain businesses that I think that I would like to work with. They respond to me. Nice. We do that and we do the first call and the next, next one, we actually go through the closing options because I know that I'm going to sell them, you know, things like I'm, I'm not at the point where I just started, obviously. So I, I am pitching them the services after the second call and whatnot. And then if, if it's a go, if, you know, great. If not, it's also fine. But you're getting reps in the tank. You're going out prospecting. You're selling. You're closing. You're going to learn a lot more than that uh, in just the actual process than you could reading any book. So that's those are the three ways that I would say. You know, freelance on Upwork or Fiverr or maybe freelancer, and then um, also just go out to the market, maybe Facebook groups, try to get some people, try to add value without asking for anything in return, and then start building your name up as a copywriter or or maybe pick a niche and go add value to that niche specifically, like hunting and hunting and guns for yeah. say whatever. You know, start talking for about say, how. Yeah know, this gun is good or, you know, like, or, you know, how to market your services a little bit better, whatever. Uh, and you don't ask for anything in return and you do that over and over. People start seeing you as an authority and they start coming to you. So third way is to get out there and do some cold emails. It actually takes a little bit of courage if you're beginning, because it's like, damn, I don't know if I, I'm going to hit up with these random people and they don't, they're going to hate me and tell me to go, go to hell. Yeah. But it really isn't that bad. You know, you're just pitching services for B2B. It's a normal thing. It's really, really low key. If you're not annoying and if you don't send 20 walls of texts, you'll be probably fine. You're going to get some people who are saying, sorry, we're not interested. Most people are not going to be interested, but just do it anyways. Yeah, exactly. Get out there, get dirty, go roll around in the mud. And yeah, uh, yeah uh, of course, because uh, uh, my agency, we're just starting cold email. Of course, you got to yeah. stand out because as a business owner, I know how many cold emails I get like every day, like a handful every day. And yeah, I, I've, totally got cool. a lot, I've got a lot from, uh, from copywriters that are offering to do their first piece or first uh, even a series of emails for free. And I've also yeah, yeah, gotten so. the, uh, in Instagram DMs, probably a handful of Instagram DMs from like young copywriters that reach out to me. And they're like, hey, hey, Riley, um, 
you know, you're an entrepreneur, I found your channel, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm a copywriter. I'd love to write you a, a seven series uh, email for free. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and, and some guys, uh, some guys even send me a video message personally, like, um, nice. and some guys mentioned my name and some didn't, so they could copy paste the video, uh, yeah, same yeah. with audio message. Like there's a way to do that. Yep. So like, yeah, you, you can't be boring. You can't be cookie cutter, but that's the obvious stuff. Um, right. And uh, so, and you mentioned choosing the niche. That was going to be my next question. Do you have a, a, a section or do you share about how to choose uh, the right niche doing market research or whatever in your, in your uh, six, six uh, steps uh, ebook or six? Yeah, I definitely do cover it in the, yeah. So depending on which side you're coming at, if you're a new copywriter, definitely download the budding copywriter one. Obviously, if you're a business owner, download that one to boost your conversions. Both of them are really talking about like, niches and just choosing corners of the market to go compete with and a little bit of how to choose them but more importantly like the background research of the avatar and what you want to collect on and for your case if you're a new copywriter you're going to be looking at what businesses you want to be looking for uh, you know how many employees they have what's the revenue roughly if you can kind of guesstimate if it's a private company if it's public you can go find it in the filings um and those are the types of things where you're looking and gathering information on like who's your avatar what do they respond to what are their goals in life and their business what are they frustrated about what's annoying you know so like if i was going to be one of those guys you just mentioned i'd be like hey riley like i would definitely lose you know, use your name because honestly the customization thing is a huge aspect when you're building a relationship yeah. cold you, you got to do that if you're do i would rather send 20 really heartfelt or not like you know emotion sappy but you know like really heartfelt like connection oriented personal emails to people rather than 150 like just random generic ones even if they are good copy yeah. it's still not using lisa or sarah or jessica or trevor or tom you want to know yeah. who they are and what their position is in the company so for you for instance yeah. i might be like look i know that you're crushing on these videos your stuff's growing your business is growing on amazon doing all this stuff but look aren't you super busy like you don't have time to sit down and write an autoresponder and put it in there and you know segment everything and make sure that it all looks great and all that stuff. I would probably use some of those things if I knew that these were the things that you were struggling with, or maybe you want to like learn how to, you know, systemize your, you know, marketing or whatever. So like I would use that stuff to help you get where you're going and then um, yeah. try to get a response and then keep it brief, keep it to the point. Um, but yeah, I definitely show a few of these things as well um, in both of those eBooks. So wherever you're at, it should be very helpful to you. Um, and these also aren't just like fluff of like, you know, one page or whatever, like this is actually like I think like four or 5,000 words of like legit, you know, six points going deep dive of specifically how to boost your conversions or how to, you know, attract new clients. Um, again, respectively, depending on the book. And then for the ultimate copywriting guide to selling anything online, which I actually created several years back, um, still live, still updated. Uh, that talks a little bit about headlines and calling out your market in a specific way. So you could use this with emails, advertisements, you know, DMs on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. You are really calling out your market in a certain way and then putting the headline in front of them that they will respond to. And then of course, we're, you know, personalizing it a little bit. So in that, that book, which actually is a, a small paid product that has a little bit more deep dive on the, the headlines and the choosing the market and stuff like that. So yep. kind of wherever you're coming from, you're going to need to know, obviously in copy who you're speaking to, what they want, how you can help them get it. Yep. 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 Yeah. Customization uh, is you need it. You need to send customized emails. Now, every cool email that I have replied to personally had something about my company. Like, Oh, I see amazing yeah. marketing code. Oh, I see, I see you help. Got, I see you help brands crush it on Amazon. Oh, you have 50. Right. Like, so what they're doing is they're having their VA or whatever, go to our website and then put in something custom to our, uh, to our brand or website that couldn't be automated. Right. So those right. are the ones that I, that I, uh, that I replied to. Yeah. Cause they make the effort. So you can that. reply yeah, with the same tell. effort, you know, you can meet them with the effort and cause it's like, otherwise, yeah, like yeah. Don't, you just half ass it and just say, Hey, business owner, please give me money. Cause I want money. It's like, that doesn't work. Yeah. You know? And that's essentially what they're yeah. saying when they're, when they're spamming you, there's a difference between spam and valuable outreach and you can be annoying and generic, or you can blend in with the crowd like that, or you could stand out yep. and literally just be contrarian, get better results alone from being different. And of course be valuable. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Of, of course. Uh, yeah. The more custom is custom you can make it, the more it's going to catch their eye. And the, like, did, did you, with the cold emails to start, did you start doing that yourself or did you hire like a, an assistant slash VA at, at first to do like market research spreadsheet and every, and all that? Yeah. So I actually was thinking like, okay, it's the same way that I have. And I will say this is the similar thing to 2020. One of the big lessons that I've learned is like, again, getting the leverage and the value back on my time. And then just staking your claim of what your time's worth in the marketplace because you're the one who has to do that. 
So my standards have been basically like, it's kind of like leveling up the bottom and continually, continually rising the lower, lowest level you'll be accepting. You know what I mean? With money, time, yeah. you know, what people, whatever. So it's the same type of thing. It's like, I'm really thinking about that in the entire year of 2020, where I'm really leveraging my time and using other people in their skills and putting them together in certain ways. So um, I was on the same tip, you know, two years ago or so, but it wasn't as intense. So I did at least have somebody build a spreadsheet around this. And cause I was like, I don't, I suck at spreadsheets. I'm not going to like go do this research or whatever. And it's also mundane and repetitive. And after 10 companies or whatever, I was like, this is a low level activity compared to what I want to do, which is writing the copy, sending it out, all that. So I eventually, or originally I started with finding all the companies doing all that stuff, making it in the spreadsheet. And then also sending the emails manually and copying and pasting the template and then fully filling out their name there. Uh, I did a lot of customization. So the name, the actual title of the company, and then the company itself, mm-hmm. uh, obviously the name and kind of a few things of what they specifically might need, or maybe saying one cool thing that I like that, that they contributed to, like maybe if they're a, the editor for this website, I'd be like, I like the, you know, the word choice that you used here and there, like the copies or how, mm-hmm. whatever, saying something specific, right? But yeah. as time went by, I went a lot deeper in outsourcing everything that wasn't my core competency and then automating everything that I could automate. So it went really, really efficient by doing, somebody did all the spreadsheets, they did the research, they put all the links and the numbers and the names and all the um, position and the name and the lead and the decision maker for the business. And then, um, so they gave me that and I just loaded it up. And then I also started using Streak, which helped a lot because it's really easy. You can start with a small plan for free if you have a small number of contacts. But basically streak, you just load all those contacts up, you load the messages up and you, you, they do automatically the, all the customization. So you can say, hey, James, I know you're the CMO for, you know, Think Fresh or whatever. I'm just making everything up. But uh, I'd like to talk to you about this and that and, uh, you know, how your copy's looking. If you need any need, um, developmental needs on the front end or the back end specifically, you just let me know. Hit me back whenever you get a second. Something as short as that. And then also trying to give, you know, a little bit of value by saying, you know, I liked how you, the way that you did this, or like, is this, is there any help that you might need for these areas or whatever, specifically again, towards their business, that was what got response. And then of course, the most important thing is following up. So yeah, to answer your question in a nutshell, it started from very inefficient to hyper dialed at the end and yep. it was really systemized. So yeah, it was, it's a, it goes the yep. process. It's a normal thing, like building a business, you're going to get better and better at what you do. And I was just having this chat last night, like whatever you're not good at, or you don't enjoy doing, you should try to outsource as much as possible and keep in your core strength because that's how you grow. Yep. Absolutely. A, B, C is one, two, three is let's go, uh, start off and yeah, start scraping your, uh, your first case studies and get those and they start yeah. just like with my agency, it started off, you know, certain hourly rate, maybe whatever, 30 bucks an hour, then raise it to 50. And then now it's at 75 and I'm going to move it up to hundred, you know, soon on my upward profile. Um, what's, what's your, uh, on your upward profile, what does it show? I'm just curious as your hourly rate, like uh, 150, 100, 200, 150. Yeah, 150, that's yeah. good. That's that's good I'm also not doing any projects or hourly, like for, for on the upwork side, yeah. haven't done any hourly for months. I'm only doing flat yeah. because it's the best Fixed return rate. on my value. And also people sure. are paying up front. So either they pay the whole thing or at least half up front, because again, it's like you're paying yeah. a professional to show up. And this is the, yeah. the entry fee of like, okay, at least put half down because this is the commitment for me to look at your business. Like you got to think about it this yeah. way. Like a, got, a lot of times you go through these, you know, business growth or whatever. It's, it's all mental practically, you know, like 90% mental. You're, you're putting price on your value and your time and also recognizing that, you know, when you show up to someone else's business, like you could be doing all of this for your own funnels. And if you're fitting, uh, figuring this out for your own funnels, like your ads and your emails and whatever, and the landing pages, like you're, you're using this skill for someone else to build and scale their efforts. So you got to recognize that, you know, you're using this for them. And so they they should at least pay you, you know, whatever your fee is to start or deposit an account or whatever yeah. for this, you know, for this agreement, because you're using the skill set that you've dialed and you're about to supercharge their stuff. If you're, if you're good, if you're a good designer, a good um, developer, a good copywriter. So it's, it's kind of that mindset thinking of like, yeah, like, you know, and I have my own side projects where I'm working on specifically given everything under wraps or whatever, but I'm leveraging my skill set to, you know, actually do this whole thing for myself. Um, I just don't talk about stuff until it's profitable, obviously, but I'm working on things that are going to help me again, directly leverage the skill in a way that it's actually, you know, streamlined into products and services of my own, which is instead of me selling the skill set and time, right? So even though my time is leveraged and I'm getting pretty good return on it and whatnot, and hourly rate effectively is quite decently uh, high, but 
it doesn't matter because you're still selling time for money. Even if you're getting a hundred grand yeah. a month, it doesn't really matter. You're still in that model. So I'm very well aware yeah. of that. And I'm working on elevating to my own, you know, next level of what I see in my head and I'm strategizing everything, but yeah, I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but my point is here is, you know, yeah. you, you, uh, you go through the 90% mental and uh, you just have to be yep. ready. 100%. Yeah. Uh, my agency, we, everything paid at the beginning of the month, like for the monthly retainers. And uh, yeah. yeah. And that was actually going to be my next question. Like, how do you, uh, what's the, what's the long-term vision of pivoting from the model of you know, trading your time for money uh, into uh, into the more of a, uh, you know, business, you know, that runs itself. Um, and uh, I know we have uh, not, not that much time, but um, yeah, what's, I mean, do you want to share what you have been thinking? Like, are you building more like info products or, or is it the agency model or yeah, what's the, uh, what's the vision? Yeah. And I know you, we've been talking about, you've been uh, investing in crypto and stuff. So yeah, what is the uh, vision? And, and I know there is no one vision. We all, we always yeah. roll with the punches, but. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like I said before, I'm going to keep this one under wraps because I don't like to talk about a bunch of stuff until it's profitable. But when it's profitable, I have no problem sharing because then it's real. It's a real business. And what is in my head is in the real world, physically earning money, you know? So, but I will just say in general, I'm not interested in the agency model at all. It's not a bad model. I'm just not interested in scaling my you know, efforts by hiring other writers and teaching everything and managing and all that and like doing yeah, that stuff, kind yeah. of like, what's it called? Like people intensive, uh, you know, kind of agency business model. Very people intensive. I don't, yeah, it's a people I don't want to do that necessarily. I don't want to manage it. I don't want to hire managers and then have them report to me and then do that way. I don't want to scale that way, if you will. So I'll, I'll just say this and then we can leave it at that. Like I want to use my skills to actually use it into a product and leverage it into a product or service. And uh, I'm working on that right now in the shadows, <laughs> but I'm still managing my copywriting business. So I just want to get to the point where I'm using the skills that I've learned to make, you know, seven, eight, nine figures, if I will, at that level, because this is copywriting, marketing, psychology. This is the skill set that you use to make revenue. I mean, it's literally that simple. Like if you use direct response, you can, scale infinitely because your words are selling the product, you know, the uh, product, you know, the market, you know, the offer, you're creating new offers, new strategies, building products, information, e-commerce, whatever it might be, or services. And you're putting those out into the world, but the copy and the marketing, the advertising behind it and, and why it works psychologically and behaviorally, that is infinitely scalable. So that's where my head's at right now. And, and that's why I'm kind of transitioning this year. Um, so I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. And then we can check up in a few months yeah. or whatever, six months, 12, whatever, because yeah. this is going to be my full-time focus. And then, yeah, right now, like I said, or like you said, I'm focused on investing in high alpha stocks with growth and also high alpha crypto space as well. High risk, high reward. Um, a lot of people don't really know a whole lot about the crypto space. A lot of people are like, that's rat poison squared, like Warren Buffett or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been quite committed for several years on that. So the, the conversions <laughs> or whatever the, the, uh, actual profit, the actual al alpha that I'm getting on those yeah. investments is quite decent um, because I'm just chalking away profits and putting them into the passive investments. Um, it kind of reminds me of something that a mutual friend and I uh, of ours usually talk about quite often, but it's the blog, like Wall Street Playboys. And what they talk about often is basically saying the uh, priority level, right? The, the number one priority is putting the money back into yourself and into your, your uh, knowledge and ability, right? So skills, um, you know, building through workshops, books, courses, whatever, that's always number one. And then number two is putting it back into your primary income, your primary business source of income, right? So for me, I might be doing ads and copywriting or whatever, putting, you know, funnels, custom funnels to get new clients or, you know, putting, hiring someone else to do some cold email to get me new leads and whatever, right? So that's, that's putting it back into the business. And once those two are stocked, which are the most important leverage managers, honestly, because you can blow your stuff up infinitely if you're actually working on yourself and your business, after that, you start putting into the passive stuff where it's just your money working for you. So your money's yeah. making you money. So stocks, crypto, real estate, you know, gold, even if you like precious metals, silver, uh, some gold miner stocks, if you're not looking to get, um, get uh, exposure to the metals or the EV industry with electric vehicles or with, you know, tech or healthcare, all those are high alpha stocks for the next 10 years or so because they're just growing so crazily. Again, this yeah. is not financial advice. This is my personal opinion. But these are things that are going to be most important to you know, start focusing on learning about listening to. And the fintech or the crypto financial revolution space is such a giant space because it's moving so fast and it's technology applied to money. It is the Internet of money legitimately. So, you know, that's the type of thing that I'm focused on um, for just passive stuff because my money makes me money and I reinvest yep. in compounds. And that's that's really like what I'm doing right now is like get copywriting income you know, budget yep. for myself for the month. I'm living like a king on like, you know, less than two grand a month or whatever. Like it's, it's easy. 
It's like the countries nice. we've lived in, it's just easy, right? And then the rest of it goes into myself, my primary business. And then what's left over goes into passive stuff where money can just work and compound and pay it, uh, pay me and then just grow. So that's that's where the focus is at right now. I've just kind of been steamrolling yep. through 2020 doing that. Yep. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Lots of growth in 2020. Yeah. It's been a blessing to, uh, to be able to uh, have an online based career and you know, our, yeah. it's a blessing that our, our shit really didn't slow down, you know, totally. a very sucky fit situation for, uh, for most people, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. But yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, motive emotion.com hit up Evan and, uh, yeah, I'm crushing it through 2020. Um, ain't stopped and just getting started, started his journey at, uh, 21. In, in Chiang Mai, twenty, yeah, twenty, yeah, it's 20, 20, 20, 20. Started this, so he's basically like, you know, uh, wait, yeah, you're like five years younger than me, basically. I'm doing it, crushing it, I'm hitting you up at motiveemotion.com. What, what else? In Instagram, people hit you up, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want, I'm not really, I don't even use Instagram or Facebook hardly at all. So, like, I would say just check, yeah, LinkedIn, check LinkedIn, or check my site or YouTube or whatever you want. I got some content there. Uh, yeah, man, got a lot of stuff to offer. So like, even if you don't want to buy the book yet or you're not ready yet or something, you don't know who I am or whatever, it's totally fine. There's a bunch of stuff you can go through. You can check out case studies from clients. You can look at those six secrets on both sides, whether you're a new copywriter or, or a client looking to you know boost your results um, and you're running a business already. Uh, I mean, you can check out like a bunch of stuff. Really, the first chapter of the book is free available. Like got a bunch of blog posts, a bunch of YouTube videos. So yeah, you have some time yep. to spend on that. Yeah, buddy. Um, yeah, there it is, guys. Motive in motion. Check it out. Um, so links in the description. Also, reminder to my followers if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also uh, follow on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and vice versa. Peace, Evan. Living that life. We just living that life. Listening to the Living That Life Digital Nomad Podcast. Hit the subscribe button on iTunes if you're a boss, and check out the YouTube channel for dope travel videos.